It has been way too long, my friends. Nathan Larson back at you with another video for those of you who make music at home. Whether you're a home studio producer, artist, or songwriter, if you write and record your own music at home, this is the channel for you. And if that sounds anything like you at all, you need to click subscribe ASAP. Like, right there. And in this video, I'm gonna take your MIDI piano game from down like here to like up there. Make sure you watch the entire video because I'm about to bring you some value. Let's do it! Woo! Okay, so what we have here is a stock piano from Logic. I'm not gonna be using any fancy pianos here because then you're gonna be like, well, Nathan, you're using fancy pianos. That's why it sounds good. So I'm gonna be using this to start with and we're gonna make it sound awesome. Oh Lord, it's horrible. Okay, I think we can all agree that sounds pretty terrible. But this is so often what a lot of people, especially those who do not play piano, end up doing. They use the good old pencil tool and they plug stuff in and they're like, yeah, these chords sound cool. So this chord progression's fine, the voice leading's all good, all that. Everything's good on that front, right? Because like that's the first thing. You gotta make sure you're using good chords, chord progressions, voice leading, pro tip. Use octaves in the bass, always sounds better. So the number one thing that you can do to make this sound way stinking better is use sustain pedal. If you're just plugging this in and not using sustain pedal, it's gonna sound really bad because no actual pianist would ever do that, like ever. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is open up your piano roll, if you haven't already done so, if you're following along. And then you are gonna open up your automation and we're gonna make sure we go down to sustain. Now, this is gonna look different if you're not using Logic. It should be pretty simple to get into in most every DAW, or no, every DAW is gonna have this option. And a click anywhere is now going to add a sustain parameter. Now, uh, 127 or 75 or two or whatever, it doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, you either have sustain or you don't have sustain. So when you want sustain, literally any value is fine, but when you don't want sustain, when you want it to actually pump the pedal, basically, it has to be at zero. Even if you have it on two, like two, it will still have some sustain and it won't sound good. Okay, so what we need to do in order to make this sound great is add a sustain value. First and foremost, right? Let's listen to what it sounds like now. Okay, so if one, it sounds instantly better. Two, you might notice that between bar one and bar two, once we change the chord here, let's make this even bigger. Once we actually change the chord, guess what? Don't sound so great, folks. Why is that? Well, the reason is because we're changing from one chord to the next chord and there's all this sustain happening and that's bleeding into the next chord, which then gets really messy, messy and gross. So we have to fix that. So. That was a lot. We got to click on every single time there's a chord change. Now, if you're doing chord changes on every two beats, for example, you're still going to want to do that every single time there's a chord change. Essentially, anytime there's buildup that you need to remove, you're going to need to have a pump in the sustain pedal. So that one little dot there is not enough. We need to put another one pretty close to it like that. So we're going to do two dots, two dots, and then grab that first one, drag it all the way down to zero. It has to be zero or else it will not actually do it. So you can see this is on one that's not gonna work, it has to be on zero. And we're gonna do that for every single one of these. That's not gonna work, we gotta fix that. I gotta fix that. Stop, oh my gosh, zero, no, I don't want four, zero. Okay, zero again, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do is at the very beginning here, we're gonna add this as well. Now the reason I'm doing this is because you wanna make sure that if you were to then create a repetition of this piano roll here, let's say we're gonna do Command R and then duplicate that or loop it, you wanna make sure that there is a, a pedal pump at the beginning as well. So let's play it now and see how this sounds. Yeah. That sounds infinitely better just from doing that one thing. And that's just tip number one. We need to make sure we do that in every single case that you have piano. Now there are instances where you would not want to have sustain pedal, like let's say it was this instead. Right, like a staccato type thing, you're not gonna wanna have a ton of sustain pedal going on there. Okay, number two, the second thing that you need to do to make this sound a heck of a lot better is, guys, <sighs> velocity is literally the most important thing. The most important thing. If you are going in and just doing this whole thing, ready? 
-hmm. like just typing stuff in. Like there's nothing wrong with doing that, by the way. There's literally, there's nothing wrong with doing it. Not everyone plays the piano and that's perfectly fine. Though if you have an opportunity, seriously learning piano might be one of the most valuable things you could do as a producer. So with that said, no live piano player is going to play something with the exact same level of velocity or touch on the keyboard every single chord. That's just not how it's going to happen. It sounds soulless, lifeless. There's no expression. There's no dynamic. So we need to make sure that if you are plugging in MIDI like this and drawing it in, that you need to be having some level of expression. Now, the way that you can do this is going in here and thinking about it from the perspective of what would a live pianist do? Those velocities are not all the same. See, watch what happens if I duplicate this. Let's mute that temporarily. And I'm gonna perform it now. Okay, so let's actually take a look. Let's delete that last one. And check that out. Look at all the color going on there, right? Pretty significantly different. Right, so check that out. I start with 98 right there, and then 72, and then even softer, 60, and then 92. Check that out, right? So the idea here is that you need to go in and you need to get very detailed. If you want stuff to actually sound realistic, you have to get very detailed about how you're doing this. So we would go in here, and let's make this first one louder, kind of like what I did earlier, 90, and let's bring this down to like 70, bring this down to maybe 64, and then bring that up. Right, to like 84 some. Let's make that bass note a little louder too. Let's bring that down a little more. Let's bring that up a little bit more. I think you guys can get the idea. Now, there are lots of different ways you can alter the velocity. You can do it down here by going to note velocity. You can start manipulating things and grabbing notes and, and moving them this way. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Um, you can do it the way I was doing it, which is just selecting the chord and then going over here to velocity and then altering the velocity of the chord itself. It's gonna help a ton, a ton, a ton. It makes a big, big difference. So make sure you are doing that. It will sound way stinking better. Okay, so now that we've got the velocity thing figured out, there is a third thing that we can do that is going to make it sound so much better. So again, we are using a Logic Yamaha Yamaha <laughs> grand piano sound that's just stock with this instrument. So this doesn't sound particularly great. The way that we can fix this is by adding reverb. So I'm gonna add QL spaces, which is just a reverb I really enjoy by East West. I'm gonna go to show presets. I'm just gonna find one that I like. Let's try this one. Okay, so this is a 2.2 second cathedral. I'm just gonna leave it on the settings it has right out of the gate, see how this sounds. Okay, I like that, the pre-delay is a little much. So as I've shown you guys, I haven't gone through and done all of the velocity stuff in here yet. So let's just assume that we're using the performance that I played and we've already made those changes to that. Here we go. So that right there sounds a lot better. Now, of course, the fourth thing is you can get professional level sample libraries to sound a lot better. Not everyone is gonna have that opportunity to do that, but if you are looking for really good piano sounds, I'm a huge fan of all the native instrument stuff. The Giant, the Gentleman, and the Unicorda are like my three top favorite piano plugins. So real quick before you leave, if you would like to have a free entire session breakdown of one of my own tracks, I have over an hour of video broken down into nice bite-sized piece of videos, breaking down an entire one of my tracks called I Will Rise. That link is in the description down below. It's 100% free. It is as a thank you for watching this video. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe, like the video to give me some love, drop a comment down below. I would love to hear what your takeaways were from this video and if it helped you. We'll see you in the next one.